and the Cox family, as well as Pat Kiesa, who's been covering Nelsville York all year. They made their way down to Nelsville York High School, or Wellston High School, rather, on Wednesday as Nelsville York began their postseason action against Crooksville out of the Muskingum Valley League. And while the Buckeyes showed they could hang with teams all year, the Ceramics shot out of the cannon and never looked back, ousting the Buckeyes 58 to 34. We had a chance to catch up with head coach Amanda Dalton after the game and catch up with her thoughts about the season. Basically, I told them the season was, was uh, an up and, up and down season, but it, uh, I felt like a lot of us grew a lot, and uh, we grew a lot as a coach, I grew a lot as a team, and, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy with the seven wins that we had this year. And you can see that the margin of victory right there was huge, 54-38. to 38. You know, it, 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 the, the end of the game really proved to be a blowout, but when did this game really get ugly? Well, Rob, Kirksville started this game out on an 8-0 run. All eight of those points were actually by 5'11 junior set junior center Brittany Swingle. But you know what, Nelsonville, they ended up chipping wood. They ended up coming back into this game and making it, as, and making it 19 to 14 halfway through the second quarter. And we really, I thought, behind the senior leadership of Kelly Cox, Maria Martinez, and Chelsea Martin, that this might be a ball game. But from there, Crooksville said, you know what, we're not gonna have any of this. And they just turned on the Jets. It went on a 12-2 run going into halftime. And you know what, the fat lady was singing the halftime show. That was, that was all she wrote in this game. I talked to Kelly Cox after the game, and she said, you know what, this is just one of those nights that our shots were just not falling, and it was vice versa for Big C. And, Rob, it was just a terrible game, to say the least, for that to happen for Nelsonville. So do you think it all came down to just simply being, you know, carrying out the execution? Oh, uh, you know, Rob, no, I did not. Let's make no mistake, this was not the same Nelsonville team we've seen all year. They were nowhere near their potential tonight. But you know what, I think Crooksville was just the better team. Behind the guard play of Taylor German, and the play down low, Brittany Swingle, they were just, they are a very good team. Their 6-12 and 12 record is very deceiving, and I really think you can hold me to this. I think they're going to give Zane Trace a run for their money in the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, Crooksville was a phenomenal team, but, you know, even for next year, Nelsonville, they're going to have a lot of young talent coming back, and for second-year coach to be Amanda Dalton, she's going to have a lot to work with in the second year. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. And momentum is so crucial entering the playoffs, and Trimble has just that, as the Tomcats have won eight out of their last 11 games, mostly due to the junior guard tandem of Taylor Savage and Jesse Spears. The fifth seed of Tomcats drew a tough opening round opponent in Minford in the Division III bracket, and their road to the Conville will be an uphill battle right from the get-go. The Falcons get the Tomcats, who are playing the right, you know, they're playing winning basketball at the right time of the year. And I mean, for more on that game, we're going to talk with our Trimble expert. Carter Rodriguez, and for more on that game, you talk about the, you know, there's matchups all year long. For, for this specific game, what's the matchup that you're looking to that'll improve the outcome of this game? Well, I talked to Coach Mark Chaney, and what I got from him is that this game is going to come down to the point guards. For Minford, you have Kendra Justice. She's their primary ball handler. She initiates their offense. She leads the break. She just does a lot of great things for this team. And, and Savage, of course, you know, we talk about her all the time. She runs that team. And, uh, you know, talking to the coach, I learned, you know, they, they play an up-tempo style. They try, Menford play, tries to force a lot of turnovers. You know, they get out on the break. That's how they get their offense. So taking care of the ball is really going to be important for Savage and the rest of Trimble. Now, Menford is young. They have no seniors. Their youth really shows at times. And that, that's something that Trimble can really look to capitalize on. And, you know, it's going to take a strong effort from the whole team, not just Savage, for them to come away with this one. I mean, and we've mentioned a couple times on this show that if Trimble can play together as a unit, they can really take down any team in Southeast Ohio. And if you're talking about playoffs, it's one win in advance. So that's the perfect formula for the Tomcats. Thanks, Carter. Thanks, Rob. And for more coverage of Trimble versus Minford and all the playoff action, Hardwood Heroes is your home for TVC playoff basketball www.web.org slash heroes is your home for playoff basketball. We've got bracket breakdowns, video recaps of all the local teams embarking on the road to the convo. Also check out our all hero team selections featuring the top talent from the TVC and we just saw it with Athens. If you can't get enough of Tory Dixon's half court shot, you guessed it, we've got it all at your fingertips. And it might not be a stretch to say that FedHawk has had some time to check out the website as the Lancers didn't have a game for 10 days prior to the postseason. And Brian Appleton, who joins us covering Federal Hawking, had a chance to break down Fed Hawks tournament road. And Fed Hawk drew the sixth seed out of the Division IV tournament and would fade Eastern Pike in the first round. And the senior class, including Hannah McKibben and Julie Vinson, would no, like nothing more than an appearance back at the convo. And early on for this game, it looked like the Lancers would do just that. Julie Vinson doing work from all areas of the court. Well, that's right, Rob. And the team really flowed well in that first half. You see her with her best baseball impression there, throwing the pass down to Shanda Cuckler. And then making it work in the post, too, throwing it up for an easy two. And, and they look good all game. 
but Eastern Pike had a weapon of their own named Courtney Rowe just drilling it from three. It would continue to be a back and forth contest here. Yeah, and you see Cuckler pulling down her own rebound there for the easy two, and then there's Rowe again, throwing it down for two and getting the foul. So here we have Alicia Skinner, or that was just uh, Alicia Skinner hitting the three. Again, back in row, there's Rowe saying, what you, can, what you can do, I can do better. And then here's Alicia Skinner back with the, the easy two. The big story though late, Hannah McKibben would foul out with about a minute to go in the fourth quarter. That's too much to overcome. Eastern Pike would advance over the Federal Hockey Lancers by 5, 47 to 42 your final in round one. So Fed Hawk one and done early on. What doomed them in the fourth quarter there? Well, Rob, the unfortunate thing for the Lancers is that they never actually trailed Eastern until there were about four minutes left in the fourth quarter. But it's been the story all year, they had 21 turnovers on the night. So that really hurt them in the end. But other than turnovers, the Lancers had more positives on the night than negatives, shooting 42% from the field and getting eight steals from Eastern. And as always, Shanda Cuckler showed up with a strong performance with 21 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists. And the funny thing about that is it kind of showed how valuable Cuckler was to the team. She got in some foul trouble during the second quarter, had to sit on the bench. During that time, Eastern went on, on, went on a 9-0 run. So Julie Vincent, we really saw her development all throughout the year, and it kind of showcased in Thursday's game. Well, that's right, Robin. Talking with Vincent after the game, you can tell that she's really going to miss playing for this team. She's kind of had the relationship to Shanda Cuckler this year that Scotty Pippen had to Michael Jordan. She was giving her nice feeds and, and Cuckler was able to put it up, up for the easy baskets. She's, she's kind of been the silent difference maker for the Lancers all year and, uh, and it really showed. I mean, and the, the, uh, the uh, senior class for Fed Hawk will be dearly, will be dearly missed by all of them Stewart as their season is in. It's too bad to see that. I mean, it really came down to the end. Thanks, Brad. And has the season ever been, we're actually going to go, uh, we talk about uh, to, uh, the Tory Dixon hero of the, hero of the year, and has there ever been a more time, a better time, a more heroic time than the playoffs? Uh, Vinton County's Tory Dixon took that message to heart and carried the Vikings to an upset win over Athens in the opening round of the playoffs Monday. You saw the half court heroics earlier, but for more on what Dixon the entire game, Mark Pierce from Zero the Miracle the, up the alley. And Mark, what did you do the entire game that impressed you? Well, Rob, at this point in the show, I think it's only right for me to head to my locker, pull out my hat, put it on for Tori Dixon so I can take it off. Because Tori Dixon needs to have a hat taken off to her. She led this game. She was the whole reason for the Vinn County victory. 14 points, three steals, but of course the most important one was the half court buzzer beater. It was just amazing. I mean, that's something you rarely see in the nation, let alone right in our backyard. That was a great yep. game. Well, Vinton County ousted by South Point in, in the playoffs. Thanks, Mark. Yep. That's all the show we've got for you this week. Keep it locked to wab.org slash heroes for all of your TVC basketball coverage. Video highlights and analysis are available to you as the road to the convo continues. Until next time, be heroic.